Well, welcome back to our homeschool interview series. We are so glad that you are here to join us um, at our little table, sharing some coffee and having a conversation about some specific things that a lot of people who are new to homeschooling want to know more about. And man, today's topic is a good one, the reluctant learners, reluctant learners. So uh without any further ado let me introduce today's guest christy lofton christy how are you today hi i'm doing well good i'm so glad you're here i'm so glad you're here thank you so much for your time um let's start off before we get into reluctant learning and all that you've learned let's just learn a little bit about you where do you live how many kids do you have you have some good background sure so i live in northern california and I have two kids. I have a son who's seven and a daughter who's 12. And we've been homeschooling for the last four years. So right before COVID, you started homeschooling and then yeah. COVID hit and you were like, we made the best decision ever. Best decision ever. <laughs> in fact, we kind of went in, I started homeschooling my daughter in third grade. Yeah, we started third grade and then we jumped into homeschooling and then um, we did it. And then she wanted to go back to school in fourth grade, which was right 2019. And, um, and then it didn't work. And then we jumped back out. My son was still in the TK program. It wasn't working in January of 2020. I pulled him out to homeschool. Okay. okay so, um, yeah, so that, yeah, that is amazing. Your timing was right. <laughs> So how were you educated, Christy? Like, were you homeschooled? Did you know anything about homeschooling? What, what, give us a little background there. So interesting enough, my husband was homeschooled, he which was. I didn't even know until we decided to homeschool. He's like, oh, I was homeschooled. He was real reluctant against it. And then he was like, well, I was homeschooled in high school. And I was like, wait, what? And so it was his sister. So, um, but I wasn't homeschooled. I did the traditional, um, public school all my life. Um, and my parents were always very big into getting us into like all the activities. Um, and with, I just did it obediently. And then um, when I was in high school, they actually, um, they took me to a job interview and they said, okay, now you're going to get a job. So you can afford to pay for your activities in high school. <laughs> so wow. Just went and did it, <laughs> got the job. And then, um, and then in college, they were, they were they were open to me not even going to college they were like their advice was maybe you want to get a full-time job and work a little or um maybe you know maybe try junior college so i went the junior college route and then surprise they weren't paying for it so so i was still working um and then i ended up going full-time when i got into university um, because it was very determined to finish it took me longer than a lot of people my dad always jokes i was on this seven-year plan but i paid for it myself so. and i graduated with um a degree in uh, public relations and then also a minor in drama so um i i I feel blessed that I had that, even though at the time it felt like a hardship and it, you know, didn't feel that great. But now as, you know, adults, yes. like, wow, that was a well, great experience. Right. And now you can see how that built your character mm -hmm. and developed you to be the go-getter, the confident person that you are, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. And so a little drama background, huh? Do you like yeah. acting? Do you like I do. Yeah, I still like it. Um, it's it's very time consuming, so I haven't really done it. I always try to find little ways that I might be able to contribute or participate or get my children involved in things. But um, but yeah, I, I did the drama degree and one year, you know, when I was before kids, before marriage, I dreamt of, you know, moving to Hollywood someday and becoming a movie star. <laughs> I love it. I could see you. I could totally see that. Yeah. <laughs> possibility. <laughs> so I'm so curious. So your husband at a time when homeschooling was not a well-known way of educating children, right. had parents who homeschooled him, um, did that make the idea of you homeschooling? Like, did he already have like in his mind what that was going to look like? And was it positive or negative? And did that play a part? 
I did. And husband actually, his high school wasn't the best. So it turned out a better solution for him to do. A, it was more of a, he was still part of the school system. Um, but, you know, it was more independent study because he was independent he, study. Yeah. And then yes. his sister ended up doing it too from, I think, sixth grade on. Um, and she's also more on the introverted side. And um, remind, my daughter reminds me a lot of her. And even oh. my husband says that. So we thought, why don't we go ahead and give it a try? And he was a little reluctant. Um, we don't know any homeschool people. We didn't. Now we know a ton. Yeah, now you know a ton. <laughs> it was crazy because I was struggling to get her into class one day. And this woman, um, this other mother told me, why don't you look into homeschooling? And I thought, what? And then I never thought of homeschool. I can't do that. And I think at the time I Googled it. And, I, and then I remembered a friend, a friend's sister homeschooled. And I always had this, like, you know, the preconceived notion, like, yes. Yes. Mm, interesting. I reached out to her and she had a homeschool club and she embraced me with open arms. And I went to the club and I met all these other people. I found people that had been going to my daughter's school that pulled out and were homeschooling. So I oh. realized there was such a large community and it felt much more comfortable. And then I found out about charter schools. So we belong to a charter school. Um, and yeah, and then we just, that's where we went in that direction. I love it so much. And, and I don't know if you agree with this, but I feel like the community of homeschooling people is such a special group of people. Mm -hmm. They yes. value family and education and they're so like just open armed, like ready to just embrace anybody to come alongside there. They're not a judgmental group of people. They're like, oh, if you've got one child in public, brick and mortar, traditional class, but you also have one that you're homeschooling, that's fine. Come on, right. we'll help you. I love that I see this happening and I just see it happening more and more. Mm -hmm. Everything that's happening in our world. Right. And I want everybody to know there's a community of people that will support you, love you, encourage you. Like we can just come together and like, I don't know, take over the world maybe. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Yeah, so many people. I was just, I look at next door every once in a while and there's been more and more people posting. I'm going to homeschool my kids. I'm done with the school board and all of that. And, you know, how do you, how do you start? And I'm like, yay. Yes. Well, and I love too that you do have the experience of both, right? Like mm -hmm. non-homeschooling years, but then you also have had the homeschooling years. Has homeschooling changed your family dynamic, your life in any ways? Like, How's life different now that you are homeschooling? It's much more relaxed. It was always a struggle because my daughter, um, I think she's just wired to be a late night person. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just, she'd stay up late no matter what we did. You know, we had so many problems getting her to go to sleep at night. And that's kind of when her brain is working and she's asking questions and she's telling me about her day. And then um, in the morning it was so hard to get her up. I would go in there every morning and then come on, let's go, you know, like sing. I was trying to get her out of bed and she's just like, mom, no. And um, yeah, drag her. So it's just so much nicer just to let them, you know, work on their own, you know, schedules. And luckily my son is a morning person like me. So he wakes up early. I let her sleep in, um, you know, I, I pretty much let her sleep in as late as she wants. And then we do her homeschool after my son. So that's kind of ideal. Yeah, right? if you're teaching multiples to have one who's a morning person and one who would rather, you know, do the work in the afternoon, mm -hmm. that's makes it kind of nice. Yeah, because they do have the five year age span. Right. So it's different things. You need to be way more hands on with your son. Yes. Versus your daughter, who I know just from being in my class, she's very independent, yes. very responsible. Exactly. Um, I've seen that side of her. So, so yeah, so that makes it pretty nice for you there. Oh, I love that. So that's really good. Um, so I do want to jump into our topic today, which is dealing with reluctant learners. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't had one person in this series yet say, I don't know what you're talking about. It is rainbows and butterflies in our house. <laughs> Every day is perfect. It's the easiest thing I've ever done. Not one, not one homeschool parent will say that. And I know that Christy has some experiences too <laughs> that will show you that even though she's an altogether person, it doesn't mean that life is always all together, even mm -hmm. in the homeschooling world. Um, so tell us first just a little bit about your learners, your two different learners, because I know they're different. Not sure. just night and day. Right. 
Right. Yeah. So my son is um, going into second grade and he's super extroverted. Um, and then he's also um, definitely more of a hands-on reader. I'm looking at my notes. He, um, I don't know why I need to. I know exactly. <laughs> oh, he asked so many questions. He asked yeah. a million questions. He's super wiggly. He won't sit still. And like I said before, he's a very much a hands-on learner. Where my daughter is in seventh grade and she's introverted and she's quiet. I call her my Zen baby because she's just very calm. Um, she's a thinker, and which makes her a perfectionist. So she's very much a perfectionist. Um, so the two of them together, I mean, it's just like, I'm having, he's reluctant to do schoolwork, to read, and her, I can't tear her away from her reading and her research and what she's doing. So yeah, two very, very different types of learners that we have. Very different and probably reluctant in their own ways where right. your son could be reluctant, like, I don't want to work. I want to go run, right? Exactly. I want to go play. And then with her, you could be, she could be reluctant to turn in an assignment that but is it perfect enough yet? Is it good enough yet? Exactly. Is it exactly the way I want it yet? So there's like a different kind of reluctance. That's that's a very good point right there. Right. Um, so, okay, so good. I, you said something that I really liked um, outside of the interview, which was about aren't all kids reluctant in some ways like mm -hmm. right there's the reluctant dog walkers you had mentioned and reluctant dishwashers and right it really it, it's not an uncommon thing right? right yeah yeah so um how do you as a teacher and mom deal with the reluctance and specifically when it comes to school and the schoolwork that they need to get done so interesting enough, you had made a quote and something that I was watching a webinar with you or something that said that if, is the material boring to your child? Is that why they're being reluctant? Is the material boring to you as the mom? And I'm like, oh, that's a good point. Because yeah, the material's pretty boring. And I was thinking, my daughter's, she keeps complaining. I've learned this, I know this. And I'm always like, do you really know it? So I decided, yeah, I need to listen to my kid and maybe we need to change things up and make it more exciting, you know? So I do know that your learner is being reluctant to what you're teaching them. You might have to change it up. And something I learned through our supervising teacher at Compass was not to be afraid. You know, they give you this funding so you can try all different kinds of curriculum. So that helped me a lot because I'm definitely the type of person that makes to-do lists, you know, like checking off the boxes. And if I can't check off every sheet in my curriculum, I get a little stressed out. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. So I had, to re I had to learn, I literally will throw it away. So I don't see it because, you know, I'll rip the sheets out and then I'll go rogue and, and, you know, try to figure out a different way to teach the material. And, you know, don't you find as a homeschool teacher, um, you're constantly trying new things and you yes. are having to be willing to change with your learners, with your time schedule. Like there's just so much we learn right we think we're here to be teaching our children and yes we are teaching our children but we are learning too yes learning exactly. so many different things okay good so so it is something that i hear homeschool parents who are thinking about homeschool say they say well i would homeschool but i just think my child would be so reluctant to even want to to learn and i'm afraid we would do this all the time to which i want to say kind of like what you said before all kids are reluctant about some things right As as parents and kids, we all butt heads. What kind of things might you offer to somebody new to this world? So, like I said, the first thing I think about is, is the material boring? And then if, if to me, and then if it is, it's probably very boring to them. So then I try to take a step back and refocus and try something different, to, um, but still try to follow along with the curriculum. And then if that's still not working, um, I pretty much I'll just close the books up and go outside and, um, I, I really tried to be in tune with what he's really interested in. So I found that he's fascinated with, um, with animals, with gardening and watching things develop. So we've, um, we've grown the butterflies and he loves, he still, he talks about it almost every day, he pretends like he's the chrysalis, um, you know, I had him draw the whole, the whole process of the butterfly. Uh, because he's a reluctant writer. <laughs> so, um, so sometimes I just have him write maybe a letter or two. And I don't 
push him too hard because then he then he rebels and shuts down. So I I try to keep you know watch of his you know how he's doing and how much I can get out of him. Yes. Um, learning wise, you know, when it comes to like reading or writing or something like that. And then, well, and I think that's important to, to note, everybody has these different learners, like Christy's mentioning, and it's not about your agenda as much as it's about helping your child love to learn, helping right. your child want to learn. And that means we are often the ones that are working around and thinking about, like we have to put thought into it later in the evening, like, okay, what's the next thing I can do? I know some people would say, I'm failing at homeschool, therefore I'm quitting. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, that is a mindset and a concept that I really feel strongly about. Like there is nothing wrong with failing. Mm -hmm. Quitting is a whole different thing. Right. But failing just tells us, well, that didn't work. Right. What am I going to try next? And I know you've tried other things. I know you mentioned something about like a box of fidgets. What is? Oh, yeah. Oh, so he yeah. really got into fidgets. Okay. Yeah. The little um, fidget the spinners. For things. And yeah. um, like for Christmas, he, my mom asked me what he wanted. And I was like, this big fidget packet from Amazon. And I mean, 20 bucks it was like she was like what is this he <laughs> loves it so he's got his little bowl of fidgets it's in his room now but i'll probably put it back on the counter by our um by our homeschool you know stations um in the fall but yeah he could pick up those fidgets and it just makes him very calm like something to do with his hands um also um i started um i had him in occupational therapy for a little bit last year mm -hmm. and that actually really helped too because they gave me some ideas and i could kind of observe him there and um and he really enjoys being rolled around on this this board that they had so i bought one they had it at um uh Rainbow Resource. I can't remember the place that I got. Like I said, learning. I got it and I tied a jump rope on it. And like yeah. sometimes if the learning's not going too well, I can use that um, as bribery. I can say, hey, we're going to do the, he calls it the fun ride. We can do the fun ride if you finish this last bit of curriculum. Or one time, this is making me remember what I did. I was like, for every page we read, we'll take a fun ride around the kitchen so you can push the tables back and there's enough room to kind of shoot them back and forth. So we would read a page and then we would go down the kitchen. <laughs> Oh, that's so thing. funny. You I mean, have to get creative like this. Yeah, this is great. Very creative. <laughs> very creative. And then this he's is, like, yes, I want to read another page because I want to go yeah. do this. Yes, we exactly. do definitely have to be creative. And you said about the fun ride, but I think you also do, don't you do like fun Friday? Yes. What, so what does is that look like? Yeah, so Fun Friday came up when um, Lauren was reluctant when she was younger. And um, I was like, why are we doing school on Friday anyway? We can do it in four days. I think I saw something online, a YouTube video or something. I said, how about Fun Friday? So if we finish all our school every day, I kind of broke the school day off down like um, two days we would do English and math. And then the other two days we do science and social studies. And then we would do art and things like that too. But I was like, then we will have Fun Friday. And so Fun Friday would be, um, maybe we play a math game. We still do learning, but, um, right. but maybe it's art. Um, their homeschool offers classes that we can call into. So we did, oh. we called into the class every once in a while. Um, so there's still some aspect of learning, but um, it's fun. And I kind of call it like sneaky learning. They don't really know that there it is. <laughs> it is. We did yeah. Fun Friday too with the boys, uh -huh. but I would always tell them, well, it's Fun Friday, but we, you know, because we did um, like spelling quizzes and, and things. Yeah. And so like Friday would be all you need to do today is you, need, you have a quick, quick quiz in math, quick quiz in spelling. And then the rest of the time, we're just going to play games or like that would be the day that we would bake cookies, but I've got all the fractions and we're talking about, right? And it is, it's like so sneaky, but at the same time, it truly is a fun way to encourage them when they are feeling a little reluctant. Cause I mean, face it, we all have those days. I imagine as the homeschool mom, do you ever have days you feel reluctant to even yeah. need to teach? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always find, um, if I'm feeling like that, something that um, never fails to make me feel better is exercise. So sometimes I'll just jump on the elliptical and do some elliptical or I have on-demand jazzercise. I'll do jazzercise or, you know, something just to kind of pump me up. And then, um, and then I'll try to encourage the kids, you know, to let's go, let's do our schoolwork. <laughs> yeah. And we would do that too. We'd be, I'd be like, you know what? Ginger looks like she needs a walk. 
let's go take a walk. Yeah. And you know, we, you can do that. You know, it's such a beautiful thing. And, and I think that sometimes when people come into the homeschooling world, they want it to look, or they think it needs to look like it looked when we were in school, sit at a desk, work for long periods of time. But that is not true when you're working with small amounts of children. That's important. If you're industrialized and you've got 36 kids to manage, right? Yes, but very different in the home study uh, environment. Exactly. Uh, oh, good, 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 good. Um, okay, anything else? What other uh, reluctant learner um, things can, can you think of that have helped you, you get your kids motivated? Yeah, so one of the things with my daughter, she was um, reluctant to do the box curriculum. So I ended up getting a bunch of those learning crates, um, crafty crates, because she loves, yes. art, loves art and um, things like that. So I was able to find like all the social studies crafty crates last year, and then we would do them together. And some of them were a little hokey, but we'd always like, well, let's look on the internet and let's learn more about this and that. And it was really fun. Or we'd watch a video or something um, to get, you know, a little bit more details. And I would make up, okay, well, will you write a paper, you know, about Egyptian fashion, or I'd make something that was kind of fun that's more on her interest level um, to take a deeper dive into learning more about the social studies. And then for science, we have um, the Mel Science Chemistry. I thought mm-hmm, chemistry mm-hmm. Would be really Love that. Because, yeah, so we did um, different things um with uh solar creating like a solar bell that was really cool for the kids and then we did like a chemistry uh a snake that that was kind of scary you lit it on fire and then this big like ash snake or the slime you know the big uh, elephant toothpaste type of um experiment so things like that were really fun and then for my son he can pretty much just observe it and be learning well my daughter i would always take it the next step and maybe write some sort of scientific experience experiment with it to show what her learning was or or apply it to something um that's you know happening um there was something with windmill with the solar energy like oh why don't we talk about the climate crisis you know like different things you know how do we you know use these type of experiments in every day yes and i think when you make them more relevant to real life learning i you know and i'm curious too like does it ever help uh change things up when you have a reluctant uh learner do you ever put the two of them together to work on something to make it more fun or sometimes you probably mostly they work independently of each other just the five years but is there a time where working together can also like increase the in the interest in what's being taught yeah definitely yeah my daughter actually my son dotes on my daughter but you know she's like a a teenager um little brother um is so annoying but i've had her read to him sometimes and then i've had her help me at points i i um bought a whiteboard that I, you know, I've had both of them. Um, we write things on the whiteboard. We've played the games together and that really helps um, them get together. Like one of the experiments that sticks out is we made chewing gum. There was a, oh. one of their science websites, you could make chewing gum together. Or they really enjoyed yeah. doing that together. So I would then have to do like a bubble blowing contest. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It was kind of a fail though. It didn't work. So oh, but that was no. perfect. Which but, again um, is like perfect. Like, hey, this experiment failed. Yeah, Let's exactly. Why? What do you want to change? Should we try it again? Right? Exactly. Yeah. So um yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of fun. Yeah, even when they fail, it's like, oh, epic fail, or let's move on to the next one. So um, yeah, we have a lot of fun doing that. I love it. I love it. I think the main lesson I'm getting out of this and see if you agree with this, the goal is never to stop having reluctant learners. Like we, we can't not have reluctant learners. It's going to happen. It's right. all in how we approach that we have reluctant learners. It's really stressing me out. So I thought, okay, it's time to take a little break. So I paused it. <laughs> And social media can do that to us. We can look at how somebody else has the perfectly organized homeschool room. And then we do this comparison. Like that's not what my space looks like. And that's okay. Like it's okay that you compare, but it's also okay to come back and go, I don't need to be like that person. So I 
I do think that's important. It's not about comparing to one another. It's about finding what works for you and your family. Exactly. These are your kids. This is their future. And if this is something you feel called to do, you have to trust the process exactly. and believe us that there are solutions. There really are. Well, before we wrap up, I would love any final thoughts. Like if you can imagine the new homeschool mom is listening right now and she's like, okay, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking I want to do this. Like right. what would you say? I would say to, to just try it because I, one of um, another mom that was homeschooling at the same time that I was deciding to do it said, I mean, you can always go back to public school <laughs> if it doesn't work yeah. out. So you, if you feel like in your heart that you really want to try it, go for it. Because I knew like in my heart, I knew that it was the right decision. And I still feel that way, um, that it was the right decision. And you don't have to... Um, you know, don't try to compare yourself to other people. You don't have to mimic a school schedule. You know, your kids don't have to be sitting at the kitchen table for six hours a day. You can do this completely organically and um, the way you want. And that was one of the things that I like to do. I like to have it all planned out, but then I've also um, somehow I've created my mindset to where I can break away from that plan and I can, you know, go rogue basically. Right. And I read some um, unschooling books. So that's completely on the other spectrum. I don't do yeah. unschooling, but I have that in mind. So sometimes I even say that to the kids because they like unschooling because it makes sure. them, oh, we're doing schoolwork. <laughs> unschooling. Yeah. So sometimes I'll even say that, let's unschool. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and that actually, if you read that and then you have the, the more, you know, the box curriculum, it kind of works together yes. for me at least. Um, yeah, it, yeah it, it makes me see that, you know, there really isn't a wrong or, you know, wrong way to do this. And no. then also belonging to a homeschool club, um, they do, they have their little graduations for kids. And then they also, I saw high school kids graduating and, you know, going on to college. So it gives me, you know, this, it, the process does work. Like you say, it's like, trust the process. It's going to work. I truly believe my son's turning eight this year. I just feel like something is going to click. And this is my hope. <laughs> And he's oh going to dive in and he's going to read me a book or something. You know, I just feel like I'm just, you know, being patient and the hard work is going to pay off in the end. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And I think that blend that you're talking about is really important, right? We can do some online learning, some box mm -hmm. learning, um, throw in some unschooling days, you know, right. call it whatever it needs to be called. Your child finds a caterpillar. And so all of a sudden, everything that you had on the plan goes out the window. Right. Right. That is how you're going to keep it engaging. And that makes learners less reluctant. And the other thing you said that I don't want it to get glossed over because I think it's really important is that whole one year at a time. You don't have to commit for 12 years when you start in. If after a year you go back, if you try something different, it is not that it was a failure. You are always learning and growing with your children. Exactly. So don't be hard on yourself, too. I would I would definitely toss in there, too. I think this is great. I appreciate your time so much, Christy. I love all your creative ideas. This is so fantastic. And I just thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you. I feel honored that I was able to do this interview with you. Oh, well. what I've been doing the last four years because it's definitely been a journey, but it's been so much fun. And I love that my daughter takes your class. That's like one of the highlights of... <laughs> <laughs> of what you learn every year. So yeah, it just yeah. works really well. Well, it's one more plus about finding resources because you never know who you're going to meet. So if you are interested in joining the homeschooling journey, we just want to tell you, you can do it. Please consider it. Find your people and have a wonderful rest of your day. Right on.